welcome back to chapter three of Amber Brown and Tickled Pink. The last time we left Amber and her family, Max and her mom just had a big fight about the wedding and her dad wasn't being very nice. So let's see what happens in chapter three. Chapter three, mom is at the kitchen table. She looks up and tries to pretend that whatever happened wasn't so bad. I can see it was bad. Max and I had our first big fight, she, she sighs. My stomach gets tight. Does this mean you're not getting married, I asked? I don't know what answer I was asking for with that question. For a long time, I wanted my mom and dad to get back together. When mom first started going out with Max, I wouldn't even meet him. In fact, I was kind of bratty about it. But Max turned out to be a really nice guy. He coaches my bowling team, the pinsters. Also, he laughs at my jokes, even the ones that make mom groan. My friends all think I'm lucky to have him. So I do know the answer. I want them to get married. Mom gets up from the table. She goes to the refrigerator and opens the door. She stares at the shelves, then sighs and closes the door. Turning to me, she says, no, the wedding isn't off, honey. But with the expense of moving into the new house, I thought it would be better if Max and I had a small wedding and went to City Hall to get married. We'd take you along, of course, and then go to a nice restaurant for lunch. It's killing me to think of spending so much money on a wedding. Keeping it small would be smarter, but Max hates the idea. I don't know how to tell Mom, but I'm on Max's side. A tiny wedding is the worst idea I've ever heard. No Aunt Pam, no Justin and his family, nobody to see the great dress I don't even have yet. I, Amber Brown, have been studying weddings, and I know if one thing about them is that you really need to have a great party. It's called a reception. Music, flowers, food, dancing. Kelly Green keeps telling me you always do the chicken dance at a wedding reception. She says it's so much fun. Besides all that, I, Amber Brown, have two important jobs at the wedding. I am supposed to be mom's bridesmaid and also Max's best man, except Max and I changed that to best child. Not the best child in the world, not a chance of that happening. I am supposed to give the toast at the party. At first I wondered if that meant I had to be in the kitchen with some bread. Max explained it means I give a little speech teasing the bride and the groom and wishing them good luck. I, Amber Brown, am nervous about this, but I really want to do it, even though I haven't started writing it yet. All that sure won't happen if we only go to City Hall. And another thing, Mom told me I could invite Kelly Green and Brandy Colwyn to the wedding. I already did it. What if now I have to tell them they can't come? The more I think about this, the rottener it gets. Mom, that is the worst idea that you have ever come up with. Come up with. It's worse than, worse than, worse than liver pancakes with broccoli syrup. I get a little smile from mom. It doesn't last long, but at least she doesn't look like she's going to cry anymore. I go to the refrigerator and get out some ice cream. It doesn't solve all problems, but it works for mom and me sometimes. She gives me another little smile. Then she sighs. The phone rings. See who that is, would you, honey? She sighs again. I'm getting tired of these sighs. There are two sighs to everything and mom has just passed her limit. I run to the phone. It's Max. He sounds serious. Hi, Amber. Can I talk to your mom, please? I hold out the phone and whisper, it's him. Mom shakes her head. I'm worried that she'll say sayonara. That's Japanese for goodbye. We learned it in Mr. Cohen's third grade class. I don't want her to have to say goodbye to Max. Mom, you have to talk to him, I say. She sighs again. I know. I'll take it in my room. As she gets up, I say to Max, Mom will be just one minute. Is she upset? Duh. He sighs. This is like an epidemic. <coughs> Mom's voice breaks in. I've got it, Amber. You can hang up now. I don't think I'll get away with listening in, so I hang up and go to my room. Mom and Max talk for a long time. I know because I keep one eye on the light on the phone that shows it's being used and the other on the pig taking a bubble bath alarm clock. Aunt Pam, Aunt Pam gave me that piggy. It's also a bank. Looking at it now makes me wish I really had all that million dollars for Mrs. Holt's class. Then I could make this problem go away. I pick up my plastic mermaid. She has blonde hair, a blue plastic body, and a tail, and a jewel in her stomach. When you press the jewel, weird music comes out. I tried to win her in the burping contest last fall. I lost to Gregory Gifford. He burped 90 new, 92 times in a row. Then he burped the alphabet for a victory lap. I didn't have a chance. 
I was so disappointed about not being the mermaid, about not getting the mermaid. Mom told Max about it and he searched and searched and finally found one for me. And that was even before I met him. That's the kind of guy he is. I press the jewel and try to sing along, but then I sigh. This is definitely an epidemic. Finally, the light on the phone goes out. I wait for mom to come talk to me, but she doesn't. I wait as long as I can, and according to the piggy, it's two minutes. When I can't stand it anymore, I go knock on mom's door. When she opens her door, she smiles. I was just coming to talk to you, Amber. It's all going to be okay. Max has agreed to have a small wedding with no reception. We'll have a few more people, just family. Max's parents and Aunt Pam will probably fly in, but that's it. Max isn't happy about it, but he admits that all the places we looked at for the reception were way too expensive. It's just not a good time to spend so much money. Will I get to still be the best child, I asked. Oh, honey, you're always the best child to me. I, Amber Brown, know that Mom means that. But if I, but if I was really the best child, I would find a way for us to have a great party. I need to talk to Justin. See you next time.